Good morning, everyone. It's Allie along with Carrie and Jess, and we have a kettlebell workout today. Um, there's some cardio in it as well. If you don't have a kettlebell, Jessica's gonna demonstrate um, with a dumbbell instead. So well, let's get going. We have a little bit of a cardio warm up. Okay.
go deadlift or dumbbell deadlift. And after this, we have 30 seconds of a kettlebell push-up. So we're gonna start on our right arm first, and that's gonna happen pretty quickly. So I'll kind of talk you through how that's gonna set up as we're doing these. So the kettlebell is gonna go over to your right foot. You'll drop the kettlebell down, pushing the handle forward. That's gonna leave it as use it as a kickstand. So we're gonna start with our right hand on the kettlebell, left hand on the floor. We'll have 30 seconds of push-ups. All right, as we're doing these, nice flat back deadlifts. Again, chest up, back nice and flat, belly in, right? You tend to think about, okay, my back's flat, but my stomach's kind of hanging out. So pulling your belly in nice and tight to support. Almost there. Again, these exercises are gonna flow very nicely one to the other. A little bit more. Okay, so give me one more deadlift. Bring it up for me. And then bend your knees to put the kettlebell down right in front of your right foot and push the kettlebell handle forward. Okay, now push your right hand on top of the kettlebell, left hand on the floor, and we're doing 30 seconds of a kettlebell push-up on three, two, and one. So, down and up. Now you might want a wider base on these, front of your head forward, and you can certainly do these on your knees. And what we're doing essentially is like a one-arm push-up on your right arm, and the hand on the floor, that's like doing a half of a push-up. So it helps you to get stronger should you want to ever achieve a both hands on the floor, one arm push up, or just in general, your regular push up on the floor will get stronger from these. Three, two, and one. All right, we're gonna take a little break here and start that circuit all over again. So, again, flowing from one exercise to the other as the energy in the kettlebell is a kind of a nice flowy type energy. Whew. All right, these sweatshirts are good sweatshirts should you want to stay nice and toasty. <laughs> all right. You still cool? I'm not ready. <laughs> Just those that are right. Yep. All right, so again, we're going to be starting with that descendant deep squat to an overhead press, to your deadlift, to your kettlebell push-up. This time the push-up will happen on your left side. All right, so in about 10 seconds, we're going to start with that descendant squat. So reach down, grab the kettlebell, overhand grip, pull it up. And again, notice that my arms aren't pulling the kettlebell. The kettlebell is just hanging. Here we go. We go down, two, three three and pull it up. And we're really sticking the bum out. Toes are slightly turned out to like one and 11 on the clock. Chest is up, belly is in. And really try to focus on that negative and up. So think about going really slow, like you're pushing down right in the water, you know, how it feels like when you're swimming, right? So pressing down nice and slow, two, three, tap the floor and pull it up. So these will definitely get your heart rate up. Whew. All right, so you're over halfway on this one. And remember to transition to the overhead press, we're gonna stop the belt on the floor to change grips. So again, you kind of have one like sneaky little squat there <laughs> to bring it back up. Good, down, two, three, and up. Okay, so a little less than 10 seconds. Let's make this our last rep. Bring it all the way down. Switch your grip to a horn grip. Use your leg muscles, pull it up. Woo, there you go. And here we go, pressing up and down. So we have 30 seconds here. Nice overhead press. Good, keep the, new, the knees soft. You wanna unload your spine. So think anytime any weight is going over your head, that's just a compression in your spinal column. So tucking your tailbone under, softly bending your knees, kind of gives a little bit more length in the spine. Good, almost there. Give me five more seconds and we're going to go into the deadlift. So let's get our legs ready. As you're pressing, bring your leg in hip distance. Softly bend your knees. One more press up. And here we go. Into our deadlift. We go flat back down. And big squeeze up. Good. Inhale down. Exhale up. Good. So if you're feeling this in your hamstrings and in your glutes, you're doing it right. If you're feeling this all in your lower back, you're doing it wrong. So, <laughs> nice flat back. Nice little Romanian deadlift here using the kettlebell. Remember that your lower back is extremely active in this, but it's definitely not the focused muscle group, right? So a nice deadlift focuses more on your glutes and your hamstrings. And keep going. Almost there. All right, you got like 20 seconds left. And remember that the kettlebell is going to go over in front of your le uh, left foot this time. We're, go we're all having a hard time with the whole mirroring left right thing, by the way. <laughs> Getting there. Almost there. All right, on this next one, you use your legs, put it down far in front of your left foot, tip it forward, handlebar is there. Sort of like your kickstand, legs go back. We got 30. 
30 seconds on the clock right now. So here we go. 30 seconds, nice kettlebell push-up. Again, feel free to go on or off your knees on these.
that's another thing too. Making sure you know you're home during the day and try not to snack as much, but try to drink a lot, right? Of water. Oh, yes. Of water. <laughs> of water. <sighs> at least, you know, aim to get at least half your body weight in ounces a day. If you can get over that, that's also much as like bonus water. All right, so we're gonna start first with the pick it up, put it down. So have that kettlebell situated, again, between your feet, and your feet are turned out to about one and 11. Chest up, belly in. We're going three, two, one. So we're gonna pick it up first, and put it down, and leave it there. And again, pick it up, and again, put it down. Whew. All right, so we're getting one full minute here, and then we go into our 30 seconds of that high pull. So try to find a nice spot for your neck. Right, you can look, I would say like three feet on the floor in front of you. It's the safest spot for your head position. But obviously looking forward, if you have a mirror at home, you want to check your form. But really trying to avoid the whole chin tucked down, looking at the kettlebell, right? So we know it's there. Don't let your arms be over, just pull up, pull up with your legs. Or your hands will find it, trust me. They know it's there. 10 seconds left. Pick it up, put it down, leave it there. Pick it up, put it down. All right, now it's time to where to pick it up and hold it up and go right into our high pull. Here we go, 30 seconds, up and down. Now, if you don't like this stance that we're into with your legs on the high pull, feel free to bring them in a little closer, that's cool. You may have been out pretty wide on the deep squat. You got 15 seconds. And we're gonna go into a one-arm row. This time it'll be on your left arm. So your right leg needs to go in front. And I'll show you that more advanced move about halfway through. Two and one. So suitcase grip here to your left hand. Right leg forward, left leg back, supporting here. Right hand on the right thigh and pulling up on the left arm. So here's sort of the classic kettlebell pull, right, one-arm pull. Could you do it with your palm forward? Yes, we do it once in a while like that in class. It'll activate your biceps. However, we do have biceps coming up, so I'm not going to advise that. Let's keep the suitcase grip, palm in. So if you wanted to make this a little bit more intense, and carry it up if you want to try it this time, come down right form on the right thigh, scooch that back leg back a little further from the ball of the foot, and you're lift, lifting up and tapping down. And lifting up and tapping down. It really gets that heart rate up. And breathe. Now you got 20 seconds. Remember, we get to keep the kettlebell down on the floor on the last 30 seconds. You want to push in these videos, right? Because you can always press pause and take a break. You want to make sure you're getting a good workout in all of these. I know we're giving you good workouts. We're feeling them too. And give me one more pull. Leave it on the floor. And let's go. 30 seconds. We're going to finish the circuit off. Nice, good old fashioned jumping jacks. Some advanced movements as well. 
So let's go into that first suitcase, pick it up, put it down. We're gonna take that in about four, three, two over your right side, and one. So again, we come down a squat, we pick it up, we put it down, and we leave it there, good. And again, pick it up, put it down, and leave it there, good. So you may find too, that you go a little slower on these than you do on the wide squat than we did before. Now, if you're not feeling this in that right leg, <laughs> Ooh, I don't know. You must have a legs of steel. What you want to avoid in this one in particular is sort of pushing your hips out. So I'm going to do it wrong for you on the next round through. So we don't want to do this. Right? So we don't want to sit our hips over and keep the hips square. Good. Pick it up. Put it down. And leave it there. Good. Doing really well. So we're going to go into a pass around pause next. If you're unfamiliar with that exercise, you can always go to a regular pass around instead. So Jess, what I'm gonna have you do is it's pretty hard to pass around a dumbbell, is that you can just put the, the dumbbell down the ground and just do some nice air squats. Okay, three, two, and one. So Carrie, we're gonna pick our kettlebell up. It's gonna start with the right hand. It's gonna transfer behind the body over to the left hand. When it comes to the front, I'm gonna give it a little pause and push it in the opposite direction. So it's called the pass around pause take at your own pace. So Jess, if you want to just do some nice air squats while we're doing this. Good. And I normally, I would tell Joe, you know, you can load up the dumbbell on those, but we don't need to. Right now, we're just kind of keeping that energy flowing. That first exercise was pretty challenging. All right. Let's go about 10 more seconds with this pass around pause. And then we're going to put the kettlebell on the floor and just do some alternating side lunges. Using the kettlebell as a target for work. Here we go. Four. Three, two, so we're just gonna put the kettlebell right on down and step behind it. We're gonna side lunge over to the right first and use the dumbbell as a marker as well. So one minute on these, side lunge over, step together, and then the other side. So we're just using the kettlebell or the dumbbell as a marker to make sure that our feet are always coming back to the center. If you want to up the ante on this, instead of supporting, you could add a little bit of an inside ankle tap as long as you're staying true to your side lunge. But it is one full minute of these. So let me do a side lunge around for you. So I see this a lot in class. I see that this, where it ends up being kind of like a side squatty thing, right? That inside leg should stay straight. Or I see this, where there's a push out, right? We don't want that. We want the hips tracking back on this. Ooh, even doing one or two of those wrong hurts, right? I can't imagine doing a whole class like that. We have some good old fun suck attacks coming up. We're just going to use the kettlebell or the dumbbell as an imaginary soccer ball before. Do 10 more seconds here. Three, two, and one more lunge. All right, we're just gonna put that kettlebell down, handle the way, or dumbbell down, and then 30 seconds here. Just a little soccer tap on that kettlebell. Good. Now you can use your arms if you want to, but in soccer they don't use their arms, so if you can keep your arms kind of still during these. That'd be great. All right, you got 15 seconds left. Okay, just that nice light tap. Almost there. Give me five more seconds. Four, three, two, and one. Whoo, nice job. All right, get a drink. We're gonna put the kettlebell over to our left side and get ready for the suitcase, pick them up, put them down. So those are, these are suitcase squats. You can also do suitcase deadlifts. That's sort of like a Romanian deadlift, put off to one side. So those are pretty cool. Not doing those today, but some of us have extra time on our hands lately, so why not? <laughs> All right, so we're gonna start with that suitcase, pick them up, put it down. Again, keep the kettlebell fairly close to your foot as that's where it's gonna go down. All right, roll the shoulders back. Get ready, take a deep breath with your nose. Exhale out of your mouth. Three, two, one, here we go. Pick it up, put it down, and leave it there. Come on, good. Pick it up, and down. And now as far as your other hand, it's really whatever works for you. Some people just like it down by their sides. Other people have it up in front, so like a counterbalance for your butt going back. I just kind of keep mine a little bit bent, right? So whatever helps you feel the most stable and in control. So remember after this, we have 30 seconds of that pass around pause. And that actually starts behind your body. So we'll be starting with our left hand transferring into the right. 
And Jess is gonna just do some air squats just to keep the energy flowing. You get 20 more seconds. Okay. All right, again, you should be feeling it in that left leg like nobody's business, whether you're using a kettlebell or a dumbbell. These suitcase alternating, you can pick them up, put them down. Whew, those are hard. They're almost there. All right, so we're gonna pick it up, Harry and I. And we're just going to pass around pause behind the body, over, pausing it with our left hand, and then switching. So, in class we do these a lot. People love them, because it's just like this really great, like, energy flow. And in class, sometimes it'll make it a little harder. Pick it up where our rib cage is. And sometimes we'll do a pass around catch, whoop, up here, right? So it's fun ways to really get this thing going. Let's do a few more. And we're going to use our kettlebell or a as a marker. And here we go. Alternating side lunges, right leg first. Coming out, together, and over. Isn't it just nice just to have the kettlebell or the dumbbell in front of you as a marker? Because I don't know about you, but I tend to all of a sudden go like way over to one side. I'm like across the gym. I don't know how, how that happens. So I like to use it as a marker just to make sure my feet are always coming back to center. And I'm sure you can hear me breathing heavy. Now, if you're not breathing heavy, if you're like, oh, I'm gonna just go knit a sweater during this or make a cup of coffee, you need to make these go faster, right? You need to up the ante. It's your workout, I always say, you do you. It's a little shout out to Maggie and Steve there. And that's Steve's favorite expression when Maggie asks him to do things. He says, ah, you do you. <laughs> okay, 20 more seconds. We have the soccer tops coming up. Alright, 10 more seconds to go. Almost there. Five more seconds. You have this. Let's do one more lunge. Why not? Alright, turn that kettlebell so the handle's forward. So we have a nice little kickstand. And we got 30 seconds on the clock here. So again, kettlebell, four dumbbell, nice little soccer taps. Here we go, 30 seconds, up and down. 
through. So, this exercise is going to go right to the swing. You don't, and um, Jess is just going to use the dumbbells to swing as well. Now, you only need enough space for your arms to kind of go through. So we don't need to kind of go swing way out here unless you have gigantic forearms, right? Just a little outside of your hips. Good, five more seconds of these. All right, overhand grip. Let's add a little momentum first. So just a tiny little swing. And I want you to think about, okay, every time the bell goes forward, I'm squeezing my bum. Now the more I squeeze my bum, the higher the bell gets. So why really start to fire up my glutes? I was talking about the trainer that I worked with one summer, and all he would do is tell me, squeeze your bum, squeeze your bum, squeeze your bum. He must have said a hundred million times. Until finally, I start to squeeze my bum. And then the kettlebell went up. So some people will do like an American version of this, where the kettlebell goes right overhead. And that's cool, you can do that. However, just be mindful that anything above your head compresses your spine. So you don't want to be pushing a big heavy kettlebell above your head. Good, almost there. We add just a little cardio drill after this, and you can use it with the dumbbell or kettlebell. You give me 10 more seconds, your butt should be on fine, more than anything. Heart rate should be up too. <laughs> All right, so we're just gonna slowly lower the momentum, slow down the momentum, bring the kettlebell to the floor, handle up, or dumbbell down vertical. Start over the kettlebell. There's our little 30 second cardio drill. We do a little tap. We jump forward with the legs together. We jump back and tap the kettlebell or the dumbbell again. 30 seconds, three, two, one. So we tap, jump forward together, back and open. So again, throwing this little cardio drill in after we do those kettlebell swing hands, whoo, that's gonna get you. But this is our last circuit. So good time to push. Be mindful of where your kettlebell is. So here's one of our guests, yes. You could look down just to make sure you got the kettlebell in the right place. Five seconds. Oh man. Three, two, and one. Woo! Shake it out. All right, we have one more time through that bad boy, and we are done with this workout. Woo! We're a little over 30 minutes too. Sorry. Good. I won't do the job anymore. I'll just get the job done. <laughs> no corny jokes today. All right, so we're starting with that hand reverse lunge alternating again. Don't worry about right to left. You're bringing it to your chest, so your legs won't know the difference. It's not like we're loading it. So, Carrie and I are going to grab her by the horns, pull it to the chest, and we're going to start in nine seconds. So, get acclimated to how the kettlebell feels in your hands or the dumbbell on the sides. Three, two, let's heal over to the right first. Bring it to the chest, and lunge back on your left. Then heal over to the left, and lunge back on your right. So just, again, whatever direction you're going, you actually are lunging back on the opposite leg. So if I hail over to the left, I'm gonna lunge back on my right. Hail over to my right, I'm lunge back on my left. If you're getting particular. If you're just like, screw it, I'm just gonna keep doing these, I don't care if I'm right and left, good for you. <laughs> That's awesome. That means you're really in the zone, really pushing. All right, so you're a little over halfway on these. And remember, following these, we have our 30 second bicep curl. Good, 15 seconds. Remember that on the halo, the bell needs to go right on top of the chest, not below the chest. I see that sometimes, certainly not your belly button. That would not be good for your spine. One more. All right, let's hit those bicep curls. Three, two, one, 30 seconds. Up and down. So, on a bicep curl, you can squeeze the handle on the top of the curl to activate the biceps a little more. If you're looking for that little extra, Again, we're going to need the swings after these, so if your hands are sweaty, put it down, wipe them off, come back into it. We'll still be here. If you press pause, we're really not going anywhere. <laughs> Just don't press pause and get a bowl ice cream and then come back. We'll find you. Two, and one more curl. All right, so let's get the swing momentum started. Again, like just a little outside the hips. Tiny little swings, again. Nice flat back over, and then again. Tucking your bum, squeezing it more and more. Every time you squeeze, that bell goes higher. So, again, like I said, I can't front delt raise this kettlebell weight. I can't. <laughs> but 
but I can use my glutes to power this. I can pull my abs in tight when I go forward, so my back is supported. Is the kettlebell exercise a lower back exercise? Yes and no. Your lower back is involved. Is it exclusively lower back? No way is it, right? If I could pick one muscle group that targets the most, it would be your bum. All right, we're gonna be starting to slow this down. So give me a few more swings. All right, so start to gradually slow down the momentum of the kettlebell until you're just swinging with your arms and then bring it safely to the floor. Keep it handle upright. We have 30 seconds of the drill where we're straddling, tapping, and coming forward. Let's go on three, two, one. So you tap, come forward and close, back and tap. Now, again, chest lifted. Even if you're looking down just quickly, keep your chest lifted. Use your arms as much as you need to. 20 seconds. Again, we're done after this. Good. Get that nice deep squat. 10 more seconds. They call the kettlebell the little gym, right? Because you can do a lot of exercises with one um, apparatus or one piece of equipment and shake it out. Nice job. Woo. All right, let's just do a quick little stretch. Let's move the kettlebell a double off the side. We're going to go to that nice low lunge. So let's go right leg forward, left leg back, left fingertips down. Do the nice big stretch. Let's support here on the thigh. Bring your left hand flat to the floor. Inhale, open up. Oh, that should feel wonderful. Good. Let's release the hand down to the outside of the foot. Bend the back knee a little. Step forward and just switch sides. Okay, take your right leg back. Up on the right fingertips. Support on the thigh. Okay, go to a flat hand on your right hand. Lift up on your left. Stay healthy, drink water.